in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about arrays. So in previous videos, we talked a lot about vectors and how we can quickly make them without having to type things out by hand. And in this video, we're going to do something very similar, but for arrays. So just as a recap, let's remember how we even make an array. So remember the convention is to call them with uppercase letters. And we're going to say, let's say A equal to, and remember we separate the rows with semicolons. So let's say I want the first row to be one, two, three, and I want the second row to be, let's say four, five, six. And when I press return, you can see I get this two row by three column matrix or array. So that's great. But if we had to type out every single entry by hand, that would be very tedious. So there are two main built-in functions that we're going to make heavy use of in this course. And the first one is called zeros. So for instance, if I do zeros of let's say three comma five, what this is going to do is it's going to create a three by five matrix with all zeros. So you can see here we have one, two, three rows, one, two, three, four, five columns. So you might be wondering, okay, that's fine, but it has all zeros. We're going to see soon that we can easily change these entries. So zeros is a really good way of getting an array of the right dimensions. And then from there, you can edit it how you want. So I said there were two functions. Zeros is one of them. Another one is called ones and it works exactly the same way. So let's say now I want to do a four by five and we can see here, we get four rows and five columns exactly how we want. Maybe one more thing I'll show you before we move on to some uh, different examples is let's say maybe I do ones of, I don't know, let's say three. Take a guess about what you think will be uh, is going to happen if I call it with just one argument. So you might think that it would create a row vector, um, but for for that I would need to do something like one comma three, right? So when you pass it with just one argument, what it does is it creates a square matrix. So we passed three, so it's going to make a three by three matrix. Same thing for zeros. So if I want to do zeros of five, I get a five by five matrix. Great. So now let me show you a few more things that we can do. So as promised, maybe having zeros and ones is a little boring, but we can change that. So I can say, let's say M is equal to ones of, let's make it a four by five. Then I can say M equals M times six. So remember this notation means take M, multiply everything by six, and that's gonna be the new M. So we can see now there's six in every uh, entry. Um, another thing I could do is I could add 10 to each of them. So M is equal to M plus 10. And now we see that every entry is 16. So I've showed you so far how to create these arrays where every entry is the same, but what if we wanted to do something a little bit more complicated? So what if I wanted to make a matrix that was similar to this first one up here? So one, two, three, four, five, six, but I didn't want to code it all by hand. So one thing that I could do is let's create a row vector. I'm going to say V goes from one to five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say A equals, and this is new for us. So what you can do is if you think about the first row of a matrix, this is just a row vector, right? So when I'm creating a matrix, I can pass row vectors as elements and that tells me what the row is. So I could do V as the first row, semicolon, let's start a new row. Now I want to get from five to six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the next row as V plus five, because then I do one plus five gives six, five plus two gives seven and so on. And following this pattern, I'm going to do V plus 10. Let me move my mouse so you can see. So we can see now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, all the way up till 15. So right now, this is still a little bit tedious, right? So I had to add 10 or add five and then add 10. If I wanted to create more rows, I'd have to keep adding. So 
in a future unit, we're going to see how this can be made a lot easier using for loops. But for now, I just want you to get comfortable, one, with passing row vectors as elements of arrays kind of when you're building arrays and also just starting to think about how we can kind of build these patterns. So um, this is just one good example to keep in mind. Uh, in a previous video, we've also talked about how we can call size. So if I do size of A, remember this is going to pass the matrix dimensions. So take a quick sanity check, what should it be? And we get three by five. So again, three rows five columns. I'm going to remind you all of the acronym uh, or the, the kind of way you can remember it is remote control RC for rows comma columns. So size A, uh, not too bad. I think we've talked about the function length in terms of a row vector. So remember it just returns like if I do length of V, this just tells me it has five entries. So here's V one, two, three, four, five. One thing we haven't talked about is What's going to happen if I pass length of a matrix A? So what this is going to do is it's going to just return the length of the largest dimension. So in this case, A was three by five. So it's going to pick the larger one and return five. Maybe as another example, let's say that A was equal to ones of, let's make it a seven by nine matrix. I'm going to put a semicolon because I don't want to look at it. And now let's do length of A. And again, as a understanding check, what do you think length of A should be? It's eight. So it's the longest dimension. Another thing, if you're familiar with uh, some concepts from linear algebra, or if you've taken linear algebra, you've probably noticed that the matrix transpose is very important. And remember, if you've never seen matrix transpose before, all that is, is if I have a matrix, so let's uh, go back to maybe a little bit more interesting of one. I'm gonna say A equal to V, let's do V plus five, V plus 10. So this is A. So what the transpose does is it swaps rows and columns. So the first row, one, two, three, four, five, instead becomes the first column. So remember, size of A right now is a three by five. When we take the transpose, that's going to become a five by three. So it's swapping those dimensions. And the way that we do that in MATLAB is with this single quotation. So if I do A single quotation, that's the transpose. And we can see here, so the first row of A, which is one, two, three, four, five, this becomes the first column. And the first column of A, so one, six, 11, becomes the first row. Um, so that's how we get matrix transposes in MATLAB. And there's a, a lot of things like this. So MATLAB, again, uh, originally stood for matrix laboratory. So there's a lot of things like this, and this is just uh, one example. Maybe one more thing I want to show you is how do I change a specific element in my array? So maybe let's say, let's make a new matrix. Let's say n is equal to zeros of uh, five by six. And maybe I just want to change one entry. So maybe I want to change, let's say this one here. So the way I'm going to do that is notice, okay, we're gonna do rows comma columns. So this is in the second row in the second column. So I'm going to do n and then I have these open parentheses or rounded parentheses of two comma two is equal to whatever I want, let's say five. So I can see here, well now n in this two comma two position has a five. Maybe I want to change this one here. So this is going to be the first row in the third column. So n of one comma three, let's set this equal to nine. And we can see it got changed. So that's how we change individual elements in arrays. That's a little bit about how indexing works. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.